Medicare, out of Medicare, just when we have more American citizens entering Medicare, he took $500 billion out of Medicare. Now, how is that going to work for our senior citizens? Not so good. We need to keep Medicare solvent. We need to figure out a way to save it, and we can. I was at the White House three weeks ago. We had a meeting with the President. We asked him not once, not twice, but three times, Mr. President, what is your plan to save Medicare? He had no plan. He mumbled. He mumbled and he said, Obamacare. This is the dirty little secret that Americans don't understand. The President has no intention of saving Medicare. His plan is that every American from from conception until death is in Obamacare. So Medicare under this president will be going away and it will be Obamacare. Here's why this is such a bad future for every American. Because he's going to appoint a 15 member Politburo that will be running Medicare, all Obama political appointees, and these political appointees will make the, the decisions for current beneficiaries of Medicare, what you get, but more importantly, what you don't get. There is no appeal to this 15-person board. There's no right of appeal. You cannot sue them. So if they decide that there will be 50,000 hip replacements in America, or 5,000 hip replacements this year, and you're 5,001, Sorry, Charlie, there's no right of appeal. I mean, is this the future of America? No. It is if we don't change presidents. Who's ready to sign yeah. up and change the president? I am too. That's why I filed my paperwork to be the next president of the United States. Going out to 
eat, sorry, no new clothes. We're going to live within our means. We're going to stretch. We're going to make do. We're going to do it now. That's a concept. But nothing is too good for our president as long as you keep pay paying for it. And my answer to him is, sorry, Mr. President, there's no there there. Put your hand in your pocket. There's no scratch left in there. We can't continue to, in other words, give our future to China because that's what we're doing, aren't we? Every time, every time we go and borrow, because because the, the lender is the slave, the borrower is the slave of the person who lends, isn't he? Or she. And we cannot continue to do that because you know who's going to suffer? Right here. See this little baby right here? That's who is going to suffer. And one thing I know about people in Iowa, nothing is more important to us than that generation. We love our children. We love them. Are we really that selfish that we're going to continue to have a party and let this beautiful baby pay for it? Not on our watch. We're not like that. That's not the kind of people we are. And that's why this is a crucial time. And that's why I put my marker down in the sand. And I have said, I just like every time that's come before me, I have voted no to raise the debt ceiling. I am voting no on raising this debt ceiling. It's time for tough love. And don't let them scare you by telling you that the country is going to fall apart and that we're going to default on our debt. The fact is we aren't because revenue continues to come into Washington, D.C. It's a very small percentage that we have to end up paying on that interest to, so that we don't fall into default. We will keep the full faith and credit of the United States. You would be a numbskull to default. We won't default. But they want to scare you. Our Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner wanted to scare you. But remember, he was the genius behind the $700 billion bailout. And he's the one President Obama wanted to put in charge of the economy. And remember the stimulus, the trillion dollar stimulus. We just got a report from President Obama's economic team. Guess how much every stimulus job cost you? $288,000 for every stimulus job. What a bargain! I think Iowans know better how to create jobs than those guys in Washington, D.C. What do you think? Because we can't afford four more years of bleak unemployment numbers. We can't afford four more years of millions of people in foreclosure. Or four more years of an unconstitutional health care bill that will be denying health care to senior citizens. We can't afford four more years of Barack Obama. We can't afford it. I was so blessed when I was growing up. I had three brothers and no sisters. That is the best preparation for politics any girl could ever have. And of course, like all kids do, we fought like cats and dogs in the house. And when we went outside, my mom would say to us, now look, when you kids go out in the neighborhood, I want you to stick together and I want you to stick up for each other. Michelle, stick up for the boys. Boys, you stick up for Michelle. And that's exactly what we did. Once we left the yard and went into the neighbor's yard or down into the sandlot, we stood up and we stuck together as a family. And that's what we need to do now as a nation. Because we are brothers and sisters gathered here today. And I firmly believe that if we stick together Disaffected Democrats that are very disappointed with what they've seen with Barack Obama. They're very disenchanted. Independents, very disappointed. Many of whom who voted for Obama, who will not be pulling the lever this year. Libertarians, who are very disappointed. And also Republicans, 
conservatives, tea partiers. Got any tea partiers here today? Yeah. If we stick together, national security conservatives, and I'm one of them, social conservatives, and I'm one of them, fiscal conservatives, and I'm one of them, and tea partiers, I'm one of them. If we stick together, we're going to make a team that can't be beat yeah. in 2012. <laughs> and then we will secure the future for these beautiful babies. We will secure their future and our nation. And once again, the United States will be the respected nation in the world. We won't be in a debtor's prison to China. Like Admiral Mullen, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who said to President Obama, he said that our national debt is, our, is the greatest threat to our national security. Now, wouldn't you think if you're the commander in chief, you would listen when the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff says to you what the greatest threat is to America's national security? That it's our debt? Wouldn't you think he would listen and instead starting to cut the spending? You would think, not this president. But that's why here's our opportunity. It's our opportunity. America's disaffected. They're disheartened. They're seeing what's going on. This is not President Obama's day anymore. We're going to offer true hope, true change to a wide swath of America so that once again they can put a meal on the table for their family. They can have a job again. They can hold on to their homes and not lose their homes. They can provide a future and a hope to the next gener next generation rather than saddling them with a, de with a debt and a burden that they can never hope to repay. Because we didn't grow up in Iowa only to be in debt to China. We didn't grow up in Iowa only to be in a stranglehold from OPEC. It is time for us to unleash American energy resources so it's OPEC in the stranglehold.